Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. morning. Thank you. Glad to see people are awake. Um, given my sleeping patterns, I may pass out during the, uh, the <laughs> presentation someplace here, but hopefully you guys can prop me back up and we can make it through it. Um, I'm going to switch over now to, to the presentation. We've just sort of been scrolling through some of the IBM sessions that you can come and see during the track today. We had a nice video for you, but uh, I'm not going to trust going through the network to actually play it right now. So I'm Todd Moore, I'm IBM's uh, board of director member here at the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, I've sort of been with it since the beginning here, having worked with uh, Jonathan and Jim Curry and others to shape where we were going with the foundation aspects. Um, I'm based in Austin, so I did quite a bit of consulting to put together what the foundation would look like and uh, help write the bylaws, those things. Uh, OpenStack has been just a phenomenal uh, undertaking with just rapid growth that you, we never would have expected. The uh, you know, last conference uh, in Atlanta was you know, extremely well attended, but uh, if you look at what we're doing here in, in, in Paris, obviously it's a great venue, people want to come, but uh, we, you know, we had 4,500 online registrations, we'll have over 5,000 people uh, by the end of, of the, the summit. Just incredible growth in, in, in only two years. Uh, and I think it speaks a lot to the quality of the community and uh, the exciting work that's going on here. Uh, in cloud, uh, if you look at the, the voice that we have, the, the foundation collects up marketing information. Um, it's, it's really a discussion now in the media around OpenStack and, and Amazon. Um, and I think that really attests to how rapidly people have decided to come in and, and adopt and, and use OpenStack. And these days our customers come to us and they say, hey, we've decided to go with OpenStack. Uh, and therefore, can you help us? Can you show us what to go and do? So a lot of what we'll do in the IBM track today will be to uh, talk a little bit about how we're doing it, helping customers uh, along the way. Uh, so with me is, is Dave Lindquist. Dave, why don't you stand up and say hi. Dave is our CTO for our, our cloud and smarter infrastructure work and an IBM fellow. And uh, he'll be helping me here today with the presentation. So why don't we get, get started? Got our clicker. So OpenStack, you know, that, this phenomenon that we have here, right? If you saw the, the kickoff that uh, the keynote uh, Jim Zemlin did from the Linux Foundation, right? Jim, Jim highlighted the impact that open source was having, but it's not a new phenomenon, right? This is something that you could trace your roots back, say, to the HTTP server that uh, really became the fundamental building block that you know businesses like IBM's WebSphere application server built around, and every other industry player who built uh, application service, et cetera, around, uh, grew up around. And, and it was because at one point, we had many, many different implementations. All of us were doing something different. And we realized that, gee, there's a piece of plumbing here that we really need to share and use to uh, get to commonality that, as a result of that, will allow everybody to interoperate, uh, make the experience much better for the user, and as a result of that, um, a big marketplace build up around it. And you see that time and time again as we've progressed through time, right? Um, and along that large arrow there, there's many other open source projects that we see having a real impact now on the industry. Um, whether it's mobile, social, big data, or cloud, uh, open source projects are, are playing a, an ever-increasing dominant role of setting essentially the de facto standard. We're not out in some de jure standard body sitting arguing over parentheses and dots and you know, what we're going to do in structure and the architecture. We're, we're in here working on real code that works for people that as a result of that is a, a layer that everybody can count on and, and then build a business around. It's, it's, it's a different way of getting to the same endpoint. It's very quick. It moves you know, at lightning pace with all of us involved. And it's, it's that change to that model that is, has really turned things around. 
So as we look at, uh, at OpenStack, uh, we see OpenStack as a fundamental technology, but we see other technologies around it that are also having uh, you know, a major impact on the cloud environment. There's essentially a cloud, open cloud platform that is coming about as a result of first the work that we see in OpenStack, but then bringing in technologies like Docker, whether it's Docker as a service on top of OpenStack or Docker underneath OpenStack, uh, providing a way of, of getting to you know, rapid, high-performance uh, infrastructure underneath it, not having to start up a VM every time you want to take something down and move it, those types of things that, that Docker can provide that will you know, give us different usage patterns that will enable our customers um, and all of you to, to get to the kind of experience that you need for the application that you're running. And of course, we're seeing a layering, and we'll talk about that a little later in, in more detail. But at the PaaS layer, above OpenStack, uh, projects like Cloud Foundry just have communities that are exciting to work with, that have uh, attracted a large base. What we found when we were working with uh, with any open source project, it's a community that matters more than anything. And um, you know, I, I thank all the folks in OpenStack for how well they work together and how much energy they put into the community because that's really what makes the difference here. And, and in the PaaS space, if you're looking for an exciting community to go and work with, Cloud Foundry is that community. And they're getting very close to actually standing up their foundation much as, as OpenStack has done. So it's a, an exciting time to be using open technologies in cloud. So no matter where you're coming into this picture, whether you're off-prem, on-prem, how you're trying to integrate, there's a set of open technologies underneath that that can be used so that you get the flexibility you want, you don't get locked into a vendor, and you can come and be part of that community and, and add to uh, what's happening. And I think, uh, you know, from our point of view, that's, that's the exciting thing to do. So as you know, founding sort of platinum sponsors here in, in OpenStack. Uh, we've had a long history of being involved with, uh, you know, the variety of projects. Uh, some people call us the adults in the room sometimes because we work really in, uh, primarily in core projects, at least at, at first. We, we've expanded that, that out. But, you know, our emphasis always comes down to what are the things that are either, you know, enterprise customers or service provider customers are asking for. Um, oftentimes that's resilience, hardening, uh, work that we go and do in security that uh, the result, end result of that is people can count on the infrastructure. So, uh, for instance, you know, as we got going in, in the releases, I'll say uh, Grizzly, right, we, we worked there to really stabilize APIs. We worked to improve what was going on in the infrastructure for security add services like OAuth that people were looking for. Um, in, you know, projects like Nova, uh, you know, we came up with 21% of the design enhancements really to help people see the value, be able to extend it more quickly. Uh, and as a result of that, um, stability started to happen. And we continued that through Havana. Our contributions there, again, included uh, things like SAML and uh, the basic support for federated identity. Uh, you know, we had to do staging around that. I think people who watched the keynotes uh, saw CERN in, in that activity come up and talk about the federated identity. Well, back in Havana, we were laying the building blocks of that into there in order to be able to go and do that. And, and we'll talk more about the, the project and collaboration that we've had with CERN in there. And of course, as we moved on into Ice House now, um, IBM has, has had a significant role, been, uh, one of the top contributors into the, the code base. And of course, you know, we continue to improve the quality of the code, improve the test case coverages, um, do the internationalization work, do a lot of the heavy lifting underneath in, in building that, uh, that functional base that everybody can depend on. So it, as we've gone through this time, IBM contributors have continued to grow. And uh, I think in the last release we had, what, 109, is that? Yeah, 109 in, in the last release cycle of IBMers who were you know, directly contributing into the projects. But of course, we have a much bigger group of folks who sit in back at the ranch working on the products that, that we go and produce. Um, in total, I think we've got a community 
of about 1,200 folks who actively are, are participating in, in OpenStack in some way, shape, or form. So it's a, it's a big deal for us, and uh, we're, we're very happy and proud of what we're doing here. Okay. So on to Juno. One of the, the key use cases that, that continue to come back to us is our customers are looking to be able to do hybrid um, cloud, right? And, and that's not always easy, especially when it comes to making sure that what you're doing is secure, right? You want to be able to essentially have single sign-on between the instance that you have in your enterprise and the instance that you have out in your, your cloud. Say you want to have a, something that spans out into the cloud. So the work that's been done in security especially, Brad Topol here and the team, Steve Martinelli, others, uh, to help bring that support into, into Keystone has, is just enabling that use case that our customers have told us time and time again they want to have. And uh, you know, often the case is uh, enterprises would love to have something on site but then they want to have that ability to either flex out into the cloud or they want to be able to do some work out in a development environment in the cloud and then be able to easily move that back on-prem. And, and that work is, is essentially uh, making that happen. So we've been the number one contributor in Cinder across all releases. Um, I think we were 33% of the Cinder work here for this last release. Uh, we've added, of course, some additional work on Cinder storage volumes. Uh, I, in the next chart, we'll talk a little bit more about Cinder. But you know, IBM has had a consistent influence in the Cinder project, moving that along, making it uh, useful for, for everybody. Um, again, it goes back to our, our central theme, hardening the core, making it um, what our customers are asking for. Um, there's been a lot of uh, upgrades into Horizon. Uh, I don't know how many people use the Horizon dashboard. Anybody using Horizon? Good, okay. Uh, having a consistent dashboard and experience is something that's really important, and uh, making it performant is very important. And with the work that's been going on in Horizon, we're allowing you know, quite a bit of more work to now be done down in the client, so the experience is much faster. We're not doing server-side rendering. In compute, you know, there's been a lot of work in Nova to uh, help uh, enable the future, right? To, to be able to then quickly add new extensions into the APIs. And, and that work has, has really been going on here in Juno, and that will set the future for us as we go out forward. And then, of course, uh, interoperability is, is really key. Um, the work that's going on in RefStack and DefCore, if you haven't been paying attention to that, is, is just essential for our future because that's what's going to allow customers to be able to pick and choose and move between clouds. And having that consistent interface across them is, is going to be so, so important. So in, in RefStack, uh, IBM has been the top contributor in there. 75% of the code that is, is in RefStack has come from IBM. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that will allow us, as we move forward, to be able to test in with everybody's instances that essentially they, they will interoperate, that they have the APIs and they behave the way that you want them to. So uh, that coupled with the DEF core work with defined sections of code that, and capabilities that every vendor needs to, to have will essentially now start to enable that flexibility, interoperability, lack of vendor lock-in that people want to have. So. Um, those are the types of contributions that IBM is trying to make into the organization. I just wanted to, to there's lots and lots of, of things that we've done. I want to just sort of hit a couple in a little more, more detail as, uh, as some of the team was around and, and uh, we thought they were kind of important for the use cases our customers have been talking about. So uh, we, I said a little bit about Keystone and, and the Federation work. Um, Steve Martinelli, Steve here? No, Steve's not here. Steve uh, from my team uh, worked, um, who was it from uh, CERN? Uh, I'm sorry then. Merrick Denis. Merrick Denis. Uh, they partnered up to do the Federation work that uh, you heard about on the uh, on stage. 
Um, that's, that's where the code came from. And that federation support is, of course, allowing CERN to then be able to link up instances. And they're very excited about it. They, of course, will be going off to the summit in Vancouver. They got a free trip. And I'll make sure that Steve makes it to Vancouver as well, too, because I think he deserves it for the, the work that he was doing there. Um, so we work with a lot of, of folks in regulated industries, um, especially uh, banking industries as an example. Auditing is something that comes up all the time when you, you talk to folks. It was one of the first things that that customer set came back to us when we brought OpenStack out to them. And uh, they said, we need this. What are you going to do about it? Your IBM, help us. So. We'd been involved out with uh, DMTF, uh, working in the CADF standard, and uh, saw the opportunity to take advantage of that work. So here's an example of a standard that was being developed, actually coming into OpenStack. And uh, as a result of, of that, building that into uh, the, the support that we've been doing in, in Keystone, um, our customers are, are very excited, especially in the regulated industries. And I know those guys don't get excited very often. Um, that work has also been extended into what we're doing with Federation, so that um, you know, the logging that's happening on authentication, et cetera, is, is now um, being picked up as part of Keystone as well, too. And uh, that will, again, enable that hybrid use case uh, across cloud. In the dashboard, uh, our team has been working with um, really popular technologies like jQuery and AngularJS. Um, IBM's actually uh, a founding sponsor of jQuery. And uh, we've now gone and improved the Horizon dashboard by including that support. And as a result, things render much more quickly on the client side. And uh, we think the experience has been greatly improved. And it's much easier to now code and, and make changes and do customizations the way you'd like to. Uh, I mentioned a little about Cinder. Uh, so we've got volume replication support now. Um, that means when you've got a problem, when something fails and crashes, you can reconnect into that uh, you know, remote backup that you've gone and made uh, seamlessly, right, at high speed. So that when you do have a problem and you need to reconnect, um, Cinder now is an enabler and doesn't get in your way. Um, we've also added uh, NFS support into the elastic storage uh, work that we've been doing there. And, uh, and that's something if you're, you're looking at uh, elastic storage, you can, should go and take a look. Now there's some POSIX work, POSIX work that we've gone and done there. Um, in orchestration, uh, heat hot templates. Uh, the, you know, we see, you know, for instance, we, we had a lot of discussions with gigaspaces recently, right? Brad here in the front. And the demand for this sort of common template, common model is, has come across very strongly. And as a result of that, we're seeing um, you know, sort of an influx of people very, very interested in Tosca. Tosca is a standard that's out there in Oasis, another instance of a standard being brought into what we're doing. And as a result of the work that the team has gone and done with Tosca, um, we're now able to, you know, uh, deploy on a template model, um, and and we think this is 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 really going to to take off as we move through time here. A um, couple of things that we did: we provided a, a translator now that will, for instance, uh, allow us to translate to Juju Charms, and we're doing some interoperability with that. Mark Shuttleworth was in here in the previous uh, presentation. We've been working with Mark's team, uh, Matt Rakowski from, from our group, and, and uh, uh, Thomas Spitzer and others have, have been helping to go make that happen. And uh, we've also added in uh, CLI. Not very exciting having a command line interface, but for debugging, it's exciting. Um, so now we can incrementally do debug and, and, and work with templates and not have to restart everything. And, and for the guys who have been working in Heat and Hot, that's, that's been a great feature. Um, and of course, we've expanded that uh, metering work and the CADF support right into Solometer as well, too. So uh, a you know, long laundry list of things up here. Um, continued effort by ourselves to go harden, build up the QA, make the, uh, the projects better, and of course, handle the enterprise use cases that, that our customers have asked for. So at this time, I, I want to bring up Dave Lindquist. Dave, I'll hand this over to you. You can go and advance it.
Thank you, Todd. Um, and thanks for the overview of the areas that we've been investing in uh, within, within OpenStack. As Todd went through this, I hope you saw a lot of core contributions in what we consider the critical areas that do need advancements in, in OpenStack, in particular in the security space, as well as in audit, as well as in some of the things we'll see in compliance. This is, these are the areas that are continually being pushed on by enterprises. And we've also contributed a lot of technology, a lot of code with the community in really furthering how we build a highly distributed, share nothing um, uh, IaaS environment. We, we pretty much look at all our investments in OpenStack as how can we participate within the community to continue to drive OpenStack as the leading IaaS in the industry. And, and I think arguably OpenStack is a shining example in the cloud space of driving communities and driving, and driving open technologies. Um, myself, in partnership with Angel Diaz and Todd, have really been the primary sponsors in IBM for years now in driving our participation in OpenStack, our participation in Cloud Foundry, our participation in Docker, our participation in the OASIS standards, particularly around uh, topologies in Tosca, as well as uh, critical advances in W3C and OASIS in linked data and in APIs to support lifecycle federation of data, things that will keep emerging in importance as we start driving higher and higher in these levels of an API economy. Now, if you look, if you step back and you look at what's going on in the industry, you look at the way businesses and in particular application developers are starting to use cloud to accelerate the delivery of new business processes, new business models, new business applications. And then you look at how the IT shops and how the clouds, public clouds, provider clouds are forming to make APIs and services available. And then you start looking at how it's being hosted on an infrastructure model. You will have seen over the last few years a very natural architecture has been emerging. An architecture that's been emerging and evolving and maturing. At an API layer, often termed as an API economy at the top. Uh, at an operating environment or a pass layer uh, to really accelerate with the composition of services. And of course, with this community at the infrastructure layer, more in a software defined <coughs> environment. It is critical. It is critical for the acceleration of the creation of these applications, uh, the portability, the ability to support hybrid clouds, and for the many advances that we have core, growing, vibrant communities at each of these layers. So at the bottom, obviously OpenStack is the center of a core, vibrant community for the infrastructure as a service. The middle layer, uh, we've teamed up with a number of companies on Cloud Foundry at a pass layer, at a platform as a service layer. That community is growing very rapidly and the acceptance from developers, the growth we're seeing with offerings like Bluemix is just phenomenal. The developers love this environment. If you haven't gone out there and used Bluemix, I encourage you to give it a try. You'll see what's, what the excitement is. Why are developers so excited? You'll see how fast and rapid you can compose an environment from runtimes to persistence, data persistence, to management, to analytics, to higher level social cognitive services can come together in seconds. And you can begin to construct your application. You can begin to bring it out to market to the customers you want to use it, test it, iterate in a highly iterative DevOps manner using DevOps services that are, are part of this offering that create a very collaborative development environment for you. And at the highest layer in the APIs, we continue to drive towards open APIs. You're constantly seeing that many of these applications that are being developed are really a composition of services for the core runtimes, but also they're composing APIs to build these applications. They're leveraging services that are opened up as APIs running all different places around the internet. That's how many of these applications are created so rapidly. So if you look at some of the core offerings that IBM 
has brought forward, I recognize there are a lot of offerings and a lot of names. So let me see if I can start clarifying the core sets of technologies and how to think about it. When you look at OpenStack, OpenStack itself, we deliver OpenStack as software through a cloud manager with OpenStack. It is basically how you get going very rapidly with an OpenStack for your private environment within your data center. It supports all, it's basically Juno, Horizon interfaces, and it also supports multiple uh, regions. So it's, it's, it's um, really a great way to get started, a great way to start delivering the value of OpenStack and bringing it into more of a hybrid construct. That next layer, we have an orchestrator. Think of the orchestrator as the ability to deploy workloads into the different cloud environments supporting OpenStack deployments. So whether it's public shared environments, private managed environments, or within your center, that's what the orchestrator is doing. In conjunction with that deployment, it is managing the policies, it's managing the integration with your IT processes, it's managing the automation to set up, say, your monitoring events, backup recovery, all the elements you need to manage the life cycle as your applications roll through that progression of early dev through various levels of test, pre-prod, and into production. That's what's going on with the orchestrator, okay? Recently, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a number of sessions, we've announced a um, IBM Cloud OpenStack services. That is, in the soft layer environment, a managed OpenStack as a service. That's what it is. For businesses, what's exciting, in addition to having a managed OpenStack, is it's running in the dedicated uh, portion of OpenStack. So in other words, it is a private managed cloud for enterprises to get going very rapidly, but also have 24 by 7 and SLAs set up for that OpenStack environment. So very exciting, very new offering. You'll see a lot of add-ons, capabilities being added onto that environment with best practices around workloads, extensions into the pass areas, extensions into the open API areas. But this is, this is something we're very excited about. And with the Pure system, think of that as a integrated system. You're integrating software and hardware. It's, it's all about workloads and workload optimizations. And one of the core things, we continue to evolve that code base with OpenStack, but one of the core things we're opening up inside there is support for the heat, heat engine. So you'll con continue to see us push heat with hot templates as a way to represent these patterns and deploy these patterns, whether you're deploying them with software, with the cloud manager for OpenStack, with the orchestrator in these hybrid environments, in uh, ho uh, managed environments, with soft layer or in integrated systems. I know that's a lot, a lot of options, but those are the types of dynamics we see and the requirements coming in uh, from enterprises to have that type of flexibility. And that's how we're leveraging OpenStack through the breadth of our offerings. Okay, looks like something died here. Maybe the machine. Just say beep and I'll beep and you'll go. <laughs> at the at the API layer, a couple of things I want to want to note. A lot of discussion, software economy. A lot of discussion, API economy. When you go into business units in all industries around the world, what you'll see in the excitement in these business units is how cloud is accelerating their strategies, is accelerating their ability to go from ideas that they've envisioned around new applications, new business models, new processes, to instantiation. That's what's going on. That's what's creating all that excitement. If you look at studies, you will see the companies that have embraced these types of open technologies and that have embraced in particular cloud as a strategic part of their company, they are leaders in those industries. They are disrupting those industries very rapidly. You can go through example after example. What's happening 
to accelerate this instantiation, of course it's composition of the infrastructure. That's a core. Of course it's pulling the services together and how I compose the services, the runtimes, et cetera. But what's fundamentally accelerating it is this API economy. When you look at, just look at any typical mobile application, you will often see at least six, if not a dozen APIs being used for ex from external systems. You will see, obviously, payments. You'll see access into core data systems. You'll see social uh, trending feeds coming into these applications, typically. You'll see them hooking into monitoring systems. You'll see them hooking into security systems. What they're doing is composing many aspects of that application through APIs. That's why it's so critical to continue to keep these APIs open and to continue to drive open technologies and open standards in, the, in, in this domain. Platform layer. The platform layer is largely about an operating environment. It's largely about composition of services. It's largely about creating an open ecosystem. So when I say composition of services, when you're developing an application, you're going to pick a runtime, like Node or Ruby. You're going to pick some data persistence, like NoSQL, like, like uh, Mongo or Cloudant. You're going to pick maybe a relational a store, depending on that application. You might need messaging requirements. You're going to end up needing monitoring requirements, log analytics, security, identity, access control, etc. The, the platform layer, what happens is the platform layer allows you to rapidly compose those services, and in conjunction with the composition, it integrates those services in the context of your project. And with DevOps services, you then have a collaborative development environment to manage your versions, your builds, your deploys, et cetera, in collaboration with other developers, all integrated into this platform. So folks can contribute to your application, to your project, in a collaborative manner, with all the tracking and governance that you need, into this project, and then you can then make these capabilities, this application available to the field, to your customers, subsets, broad set, and you can start doing things like A-B testing and start iterating towards your business outcome. You couple that with an open set of APIs and API management and integration with data sources and integration with other applications, software as a service applications. All of a sudden you're seeing why the businesses are so excited and why there's so much momentum around these open ecosystems and these open cloud environments and how cloud is changing their business, how it is a fundamental part of their, uh, of their business strategy. Next one. At the infrastructure layer, I'm preaching to the choir here, obviously, with the OpenStack community. Um, to me, some of the things that are critical here are obviously the software-defined environment, the core compute storage networking. What it's, what it's affording us is the ability to rapidly compose the infrastructure in support of the needs of, of a workload. And that will evolve over time. Over time, we will develop more best practices, more understanding of performance and workloads and backup and recovery and security. And you'll start seeing best practices evolve with policies and patterns to support certain types of workloads, like a Hadoop workload, like a transactional system, like a uh, mobile system. Though that will start manifesting itself in patterns in support of these passes and then in support of this a a API economy. We, I think, are at a very interesting point in the OpenStack community. As Todd mentioned earlier, a few years ago, and I'm sure many of you are in this situation, you are often asked by your customers, your clients, to start contrasting the different techniques, proprietary stacks, open technology stacks, different open technology uh, cloud stacks. And a lot of what we were leveraging was the architecture of OpenStack, the design of OpenStack, the community investing in OpenStack, the growth that was occurring there. At this point, over the last year, the conversation to me has very much shifted to, we strategically have chosen OpenStack. Can you help us how and when to apply OpenStack to the different types of workloads that were that, that we're, that we're targeting. So it's become very much how do, how do we accelerate 
now the deployment and the use of OpenStack to these different workloads? And how does it help us in this hybrid, emerging hybrid environment that, that we all see occurring with our, with our workloads? So that's, to me, why many of these core projects that us and the community are investing in are so important. Many of them are very mature. Some of them not as mature as they need to be. The networking space. We do need more focus in the networking space um, with Neutron in particular. APIs feel right. The investment, the community coming together feels right. But it does need maturity. There's a few areas that we will find that start popping out. And we'll have to nail that as a, as a community to really start accelerating the use of OpenStack at scale. OK. Cursor now. Keyboard's locked. Hybrid. A couple of comments I wanted to make on hybrid. It is real. It is happening today. It has been happening. And it continues to evolve in a very rapid manner. When I discussed these composition of APIs or these services, these are running in multiple clouds around the internet. When I work with customers, my colleagues work with customers, and I work with partners with customers, what we see are a couple of requirements coming in over and over again. One is I want the ability to figure out where best to run my application. So I need a level of portability. I need to support compliance. I, maybe I have regulatory requirements on privacy or data location. So I need the ability to place information and data or my workload in certain places. I need to understand performance and SLAs for that placement. I need to understand the finances. Maybe at some points, maybe in early development, I'm looking for, the, for a cheaper, less expensive place to host. Maybe as I accelerate this into production, I start monetizing and running at scale, I'm zeroing in on SLAs. I'm after the performance, the backup, the recovery, the 24 by 7. So those are the kind of dimensions that you see um, in placement. And the workloads themselves, as Mark discussed in his keynote, they are distributed, heavily distributed. You're constantly seeing what the industry likes to call system of engagements, these new mobile, social, big data, dashboards, business processes being developed in a very rapid IT model on cloud with this composition, hooked into core data systems and transactional systems, more of a system of system of record model. What that drives is not only placement, where am I going to place this system of engagement, but how am I going to integrate these systems? How am I going to do the application and data integration? So sets of integration services are emerging, and that's an area that we're investing heavily in, is these integration services in this new model. In addition to that, you're seeing a push in brokerage, brokering and management. Not only brokering, how do I understand where is the best place to place my components, elements of my workload, but how can I set up the policy? How can I set up what I need in events and in monitoring and in security and backup and recovery? How can I hook this into my change, my problem, my incident systems? These are the things I need to run this workload in production in my environment, to, to have my business counting on it. So these are the types of investments that when you go through any of our offerings, you will see we are continually pushing the envelope on these hybrid capabilities. How do you bring this two-speed IT together around rapid iterations on the front ends and optimizations, deep optimizations of security, workload management, et cetera, on the back end, and bringing analytics in to understand the optimization so I can predict outages, so I can optimize placement, and so I can do extensive search and try to debug and figure out what's going on. That's what's happening in the hybrid space. So a couple, couple offerings that I mentioned that I wanted to highlight. And you'll see in our subsequent sessions or at our booth, these, these technologies and offerings, um, uh, the teams can take you through uh, these capabilities, can take you through the experience, what you'll see, the value that you'll get out of them uh, as a user. Um, I had mentioned the uh, open cloud, I mean the, uh, the cloud OpenStack services earlier. Again, think of this as 
managed OpenStack and the dedicated portion, so a private, of software. Very exciting offering. Many, many businesses are very interested in this capability. The IBM Cloud Manager with OpenStack is fully embracing OpenStack software distribution, deployment, configuration, all the support you need with support for multiple regions, the hybrid capabilities. And one of the technologies I wanted to mention briefly before I introduce Brad Topol is in the area of object stores. Now, Swift has been around for a while. Swift is a very good object store. And so one of the things we've done is brought the object store into the platform as a service layer. So you will see this, you will see this service as a composable service within the Bluemix environment, within our platform as a service environment, which if I hadn't said earlier, is at its core based on the open community around Cloud Foundry. So this is furthering the open ecosystem of services, bringing Swift in into a platform as a service layer. And when you start thinking about the options that creates for us as an object store and a platform with some of the things I mentioned in software, you'll start getting a feel for the types of investments we're making in the hybrid environment. How I can begin to set up policies and begin to have my data persist in locations and regions where I'm comfortable or meets my regulatory requirements. So you'll see continued advances now in these data services and these integration services, these compliance, as well as management, uh, management services. So with that, I'd like to introduce Brad Topol. We'll take it quickly through a demonstration of the uh, SWIFT service. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, Can I get it started? No, I, I need to talk for talk. Lock the keyboard up. No pressure. No pressure, just no keyboard. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah, you can just, um, thank you. Yep. So, this was really exciting, you know. We, you know, and, and Dave really touched upon this. This, this environment, uh, we call it Blue Mix. It's based on Cloud Foundry. Where, as a developer, you're able to create an app and just push it out into this world where there's all these available services that you didn't have to go configure, you didn't have to get set up. They're all born on the cloud, ready to scale. And, um, you know, and we're not the only ones that saw this. Uh, Catherine Spence from Intel a couple days at the summit gave a Cloud Foundry presentation. They're seeing the same things as well. And so you, 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 as an, you want to have all these wonderful rich services available. And the one that we saw we needed was object storage. Now, conveniently, uh, we also had an object storage service available from software based on Swift. So really, all we had to do was put the two together um, Tong Lee's here in the front row. Raise your hand, Tong. Tong's uh, the person that, that pulled this off. And so we're going to show you what this looks like. So this is logging into Bluemix. Again, uh, you're going to see an environment here where I've pushed out my application into my Bluemix environment uh, after I sign in. And you're going to also see the services that are available. Uh, again, the beauty of this is how quickly you can uh, dyna dynamically bind your application to whatever services you want. And then with Bluemix, the other thing that we're adding is just the huge list of services that you might need in a variety of categories. Um, so here you can see we're logging into our Bluemix dashboard. We've got our demo application to show off Swift and object storage. Um, you can look at the different instances that are available uh, there. I'll just pause it for a quick sec. Um, so what's interesting is, again, you know, the application, you can control how many instances are there um, and what services are, are it using. It's using our object storage service. And any of these services in Bluemix, they, they, they know how to scale themselves. So even though there's already one instance here, we're going to go ahead and add another instance. And, and that's what you're going to see in a second. 
Uh, and one way you can do is we're going to go through the whole catalog, and these are all the different services that are available today on Bluemix. Just, you know, the beauty of this kind of environment is pull out your credit card and get going. Compare that to using your local IT and how long it's going to take them to get all this stuff up and running. Um, we've got documentation available, so we tell you about the Swift-based object storage service and how you can get started as a developer. Um, and here's the magic. We're going to bind that object storage service to the application and say, hey, we want to make it use this one. And there's a restaging where it basically restarts that application with a new service instance that was just added as, you know, as we saw there. And so it's going to push out to production. Again, you know, like Catherine emphasized and Dave emphasized, you know, you, you, you push this application and the developer doesn't worry about necessarily where it's going to run. It knows it's going to be pushed out into production and, and you know, he, doesn't, he or she doesn't need to worry about all these details. And once that, that, that application is up and running, you're given a URL to go get the application. And I hope folks are familiar with uh, OpenStack Swift. It's object storage, put and get objects in containers. So we wrote a little application and here's Tong logging in. Uh, so he logs in uh, to the little application that we wrote that's running on Node.js. And once he's logged into the application, it's going to give him the ability to use the soft layer Swift that was provisioned for him. He can go ahead and create containers. So we're going to create a container called files. And we can go ahead in the container, uh, go ahead and browse and upload, push up an object. And so we're going to push that one up right here. And once after it's uploaded, you know, you can, you know, it, you know, Swift is a really nice simple API. You can pull it back down and not surprisingly Tong, it's a Chinese text that I can't read, but he could translate. Um, and then of course other basic Swift operations are available, deleting containers, deleting objects and, and what have you. Um, so that's uh, pretty much the whole demo. And if you needed to delete your object storage instance, you can go ahead and delete it as well. And that's what we're doing here. So, so in summary, um, let me just stop that. In summary, you, uh, a great environment for developers to rapidly just do their small piece of the world, have all kinds of services at a variety of types of services available to hook into, and then very quickly go from development environment to push to production and controlling the number of instances and having born on the cloud scalable services. Okay. Thank you, Brad. So, you know, Swift, you know, seeing Swift mature and the things that we can do with it now, surfacing it up as a service through Bluemix, making, of course, use of all the other Bluemix services that are out there and, you know, I know it scrolled through the catalog very quickly. Um, it's something you need to just go and look at. Uh, what we're seeing our, you know, our users in terms of the feedback through Bluemix say is that, you know, this is a just a tremendous environment. We can go, we can get things rapidly prototyped. Uh, we don't have to go back and try to get the services provisioned in an IT environment, but we can we can take what we create out in Bluemix and then deploy it back into what we're doing on prem, and we love it. So it's something to really go and, and take some time if you've got it to sign on, get an account. It's a free 30-day trial and, uh, and, and give it a whirl. Okay, so now that we have no keyboard, I'm going to try to restart this. Come on. And we lost the page that we were on. No, uh, yeah, it's, it's not clicking though. There we go. There's our demo screen. Uh, Brad, thank you. So, yeah, I, I wanted to, again, hit the DEF Core ref stack topic just one more time. So, you know, I, I, <laughs> I don't think I can talk about this, this too much. Uh, we've, we've gone and we've done some definitions of capabilities and user-defined sections of code that are out there for review right now. The boards voted on uh, in a previous board meeting uh, a set of capabilities that we be view are the advisory capabilities, the ones that our customers are asking for the most, that are in production the most, that we want to be dependable. Obviously, we want to enable forwards and backwards compatibility as we go through time. So uh, 
it's out there, it's in the public. You can go and, and pick it up from looking at the, the wikis at the org. In the, it's in the uh, minutes as well in the governance wiki on openstack.org. And, and take a look at it. Uh, spend some time looking at what the, the team has gone and done there because it's, it's worthwhile and you can start planning what you're doing around it now. And we're giving these advisory notices to the vendors so that when they want to use the trademark in the future and RefStack becomes the testing infrastructure that we use to go and verify that, they know what they have to have. You'll know what they have to have. And, and you can now take advantage of that interoperability that we're creating here. So, you know, we're all in in terms of DEF Core and RefStack. We think this is one of the most important things that we can go and do for the organization. And uh, we're happy to have other people come and join us in, in this, this effort here. Uh, IBM is also working now to donate some servers to help stand up the infrastructure and, and keep it going as well, too. So you'll see that ICOS service that we were talking about that's been launched as a, a set of now servers that will we'll go and task to help with the RefStack uh, implementation. So, um, so thank you. So we have some sessions that are coming up. They were scrolling by quickly as you came in the room. Uh, starting at 11.50 over in uh, 2.12 and 2.13, uh, you can come and uh, see a little bit about uh, what we're doing, um, just a little bit beyond the code. Um, I mean, I'll hit those sections as we, maybe it's easier just to step through the, the pitch here. Um, so Manuel and Daniel, who are here, guys, wave your hands, I see you over there. How you doing? Are going to come in and, and talk about... Uh, you know, collaborating out in, in the meetups, bringing together the community, strengthening it, helping others understand and learn what's going on there. Um, this is something that we do is give back into the community. And if you're interested in figuring out how to go create your own meetup and get started or, or help others or just where to join in, please come and, and spend some time with the guys. Oh, come on. Here we go. Uh, then Mo Abdullah is, is going to come in and give a little more in-depth tour of the IBM offerings, uh, whether it's you know, on-prem or off-prem. Um, talk about our uh, IBM uh, Cloud Orchestrator in a little more detail. Mo's very energetic and, and up, and uh, he's a great speaker, and hopefully you can come and, and learn a, bit, a little bit more about what we're doing inside. And then at uh, 1440, um, it, it actually won't be Andrew. Andrew had a family emergency and has uh, flown back to uh, Canada. Uh, he's a Canadian, good friend of mine. Enjoy going out with uh, Andrew, but unfortunately he won't be here. But we'll have a substitute and we'll talk about uh, deploying managed clouds and uh, you know how to go and get your applications going in hybrid environments. And, and Andrew uh, unfortunately won't be with us, but uh, we'll, we'll carry on and uh, hopefully things go well for him. So, uh, just want to say thank you. Thanks for coming. Please come and join us in our sessions. Uh, we love to collaborate and talk, and obviously OpenStack is, is where it's at when you're in the clouds, uh, the infrastructure layer. So uh, all of you have been, been uh, helping us and participating. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you who are new and interested in OpenStack and uh, want to learn just how to set it up, use it, do anything, uh, come and join us. IBM sponsors a lot of the education tracks out there, as well as been participating uh, in uh, the education prior to the summit that's gone on here. It's something that we really, uh, uh, really think is important, and hopefully um, we've been helping you guys that, that need it as well, too. So thank you very much. <laughs>